I've been meaning to take a solo trip for quite some time now, and I felt like Copenhagen would be the perfect city escape, with its beauty, its art and design galleries, its quirks. I knew I would leave the city inspired to create and get back on track with my solo travelling. I had just 36 hours for this little adventure. I woke up at the crack of dawn on a cold Tuesday morning and made my way to the airport, ruminating on what was to come in the next 36 hours or so. Once I arrived in Copenhagen Airport, or Copenhagen Lufthaven, I was greeted by a lovely sea of blue faces. Some were of course smiling, some looked shocked, and some looked nervous, all mirroring my inner dialogue as I embarked on this very short solo trip. I began to make my way to my Airbnb. I chilled for a short while, but I knew I had to crack on with my day, as I was beginning to convince myself to use this day solely for napping. I spent some time mapping out my day and decided I would visit the botanical garden first. Before I set off, I loaded my Ashika T4 with some Kodak Portra 400 film. Not really a shock, is it? <laughs> And this is a better view of my Airbnb. I had the most amazing host. I took the M2 to Norcourt Station and walked for about six minutes to the Botanical Garden, which holds the largest collection of living plants in Copenhagen. I started with the palm house, stumbling through the leaves and thick humidity, taking in all the brilliant textures, smells and sounds. I made my way up the narrowest staircase and hung out with the tallest of plants. I headed downstairs and into another room where I came across this incredible tassel-like plant, the chenille. These are native to New Guinea and Malaysia. It was incredibly humid in the palm house, as you'd expect, considering the origins of so many of these plants. So humid that someone drew a little message in one of the windows. Then I came across the carnivorous plants. I remember being so frightened of these as a kid. I assumed carnivorous meant they also ate humans. I made my way to the butterfly house, where I'd find the actual prey of these carnivorous plants. Each room was so stunning, both the plants and the butterflies. It was quite an experience being able to interact so closely with so many different butterfly species and take in their magnificent colours and patterns. Yeah, I can't tell if they're fighting or mating. <laughs> I feel like this one it is on smoke for everyone, like it's just trying to fight everyone and everything. It's literally going from room to room, trying to find a fight. a bit more time in the botanical garden, chilling by the pond whilst I plotted on my next move. I decided to stop by the National History Museum, which was just five minutes away on foot. They currently have a special exhibition on the Neanderthals, which is on until February. You'll learn about their hunting techniques and survival skills, as well as how their species adapted to the changing environment. That was pretty cool. Some food. I took the M1 and made my way to Paludan, a brilliant bookstore and cafe. In fact, it's Denmark's oldest book cafe. 
I love the library-like interior. You're encouraged to pick up a book or bring your own tool as you dine and chill in this cozy space. I ordered myself this delicious lasagna and some freshly squeezed orange juice. Once I was done, I headed downstairs to explore the bookstore. I found this Man Ray book, Human Equations, where we see how Man Ray moved between the disciplines of mathematical models, paintings, and photographs, linking inanimate objects to the human body and vice versa. I headed out and made my way to the canal, hoping to join a canal tour, but none of the companies seemed to be open, but I still hung around for a bit and took in the sights. The Christiansborg Castle Church and the huge Bro or High Bridge and the beautiful water flowing through it. I walked through some side streets and decided to embark on an hour long journey to the Louisiana Museum of Modern Art. First, I took the Metro. I honestly thought I was in a Stanley Kubrick film for a second. And then a railway train and another. Before arriving at Hummelbeck Street Station and walking for another 10 minutes. The skies were absolutely pouring by the time I got to Louisiana, but I was super excited to be visiting such a world-renowned art museum. I spent some time at the Sculpture Park, taking in this 1963 Henry Moore piece and admiring how beautifully it sat against its backdrop, the Oresund, or the Sound, which is the body of water that separates Denmark from Sweden. I'm sure the sculpture park is stunning during the day, especially on a sunny day, but there was something so magical about standing in the rain and looking onto the sea, surrounded by giants. I made my way to the east wing of the museum to see the works of some contemporary giants. Cindy Sherman, Andy Warhol, and then to the north wing to see the surrealist sculptures by Alberto Giacometti. I soon found myself in the world of Alex de Porte, surrounded by colourful walls, neon lights, stripes, squares, zigzag stars, with the works across video, performance, painting and sculpture. His work is described as pop art on acid, and is an exploration of how we consume pop culture and how it affects our sense of self. on the characters of popular figures, reimagining them, like in this piece where he transforms himself into Eminem, particularly his slim shady persona, as a means of empathising with the human behind this very polarising alter ego. It was a new day and I was now 24 hours into my Copenhagen solo travels. I decided to head to the Ordo, a hotel and concept store in Ahusgard. Every item you see is available for purchase, from furniture to flooring. It's a very interactive space. I ordered myself some scrambled eggs and a coffee and soon began to make my way to the Den 3 Centre of Contemporary Art to see their current show, Another Surrealism. Okay, so now I'm heading to the Contemporary Art Museum.
this exhibition, we see how historic surrealism and contemporary art consist alongside one another, and how contemporary artists can use surrealist tendencies to provoke questions about consumerism and capitalism. It was very interesting walking through this arcade and seeing reconstructions of surreal window displays by artists such as Wilhelm Freddy and thinking about the use and objectification of mannequins in historic surrealist art and seeing them alongside contemporary displays such as this one by John Miller and Nina Beer, which shows these childlike mannequins facing away from the spectator towards photographic portraits. Something that is quite unsettling as we're so used to mannequins looking towards us. I really enjoyed this installation by artist Sashiro Matsubara and how these heavier objects and sculptures hung effortlessly from the light fabric walls which formed the labyrinth, which I guess could also be deemed a sculpture. This video piece by Aske Olsen was truly something. When I posted it onto my Instagram, I added the caption that indicated just how much this montage looks and feels like my undiagnosed ADHD. It's definitely also a conversation on how rapidly and constantly our world produces images, content and fragments of information. After all that chaos, I took a short four minute walk to the Castellet. And here is me being awkward, trying to film a cute moment and not remembering if I hit the record button or not. Okay, so next I'm heading to the Castellet, I think is how you say it. And it's one of the most preserved um, citadels, fortresses in Northern Europe, according to Google. So yeah, I'm just heading to it. And it's arranged in a really cool pentagonal kind of way um which obviously we can't see overhead because i'm holding the block camera and i don't have a drone but it looks pretty cool in the images on google so i'm just exploring the grounds and then i'll show you the actual structure Once I left the Castellet grounds, I decided I'd visit the Design Museum, which was 10 minutes away on foot. I started with the Future is Present exhibition, which provokes questions on what our society will look like, what our relationships will entail, the kind of behaviours we'll have, our values. I thought this craft of this manifesto was also very interesting. I do follow some of these, but I'd love to apply a lot more of them to my practice. I then went into the magical form, which shows us the emergence and journey of Danish design and how it has influenced art, architecture and design worldwide. And then I chilled for a bit, flicking through these magazines and figuring out my next move. I 
hopped on an M3 to Islands Brigade, hoping to visit the sliced banana thrift store, but it was closed or they seemed to have moved locations. But I found this amazing shop nearby and purchased every single item I tried on. I was now on my last few hours in Copenhagen and really wanted to take in this beautiful city one last time. And so I sat by the harbour front for a while. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip and adventuring with me, visiting galleries, vibing, walking around for the most part. I really hope you enjoyed the video, hopefully lots more traveling to come. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace.